Hello and welcome to Tankfest, well the car park of Tankfest at the moment. Tankfest is an annual kind of show that happens at the Tank Museum down south. It's kind of near Bournemouth in England and it's the biggest show of tanks in the world. We have just arrived, we're coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we organised ourselves like pros for this as there were several different areas and events where certain things were only happening at certain times. We wanted to see it all if we could. The main areas were the talks that were being given throughout all three days and the arena with live displays. So the night before, we sat down with the programme of events, marked off all the talks we wanted to listen to and all the live displays we wanted to watch. And after we did that, it gave us a programme to follow throughout the three days. Obviously, you don't have to do that, but it really helped us to make the most of our time whilst we were there. Our programme meant that day one morning was the live displays and the afternoon were the talks. And between the two, we would fit in some wandering around and hopefully some lunch along the way. When we entered, we headed straight for the Kuwait arena where the live displays were taking place. The format of the shows were starting at World War I in the morning and going through the 20th century, showcasing the development of tanks from both Britain and other nations until the last show of each day where modern tanks would be showcased. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. That's much more like it, as I as these are. My name's Richard Smith. I'm the director of the Tank Museum. It is my honour to welcome you uh, to Bobbington and to the Tank Museum. And this is the world's biggest and best display of historic moving armour. So as you enjoy the day, you'll feel the ground shake, you'll hear the engines, you'll smell the great smell of diesel, and you will feel the grit in your eyes. It is my delight and duty to declare that Tank Fest 2023 is strange beds, you've got an awful long way, there's some very weird people standing next to you. We understand all that, but you're in, we're about to put on the display, <laughs> relax, okay? This is safe territory, you're all with like-minded people. Now, our theme today is we're going to be talking about the anti-tank story and why we thought we'd do that. We've all been watching on the news. Ten months ago, the end of the tank, because the top attack weapons we've all been seeing in the Ukraine, etc. Now, all of a sudden, we can't get enough tanks, can we again? And that's the history we tell here at this museum. Now, the thing to remember about the First World War is when it started, nobody could anticipate the way it turned out. What they were expecting was mobile warfare. So, the three fighting arms, infantry, artillery, cavalry, armies dash about the landscape where they bump into one another and that's where you have that. That of course does not happen after the first few weeks and it stagnates into trench warfare. We're going to start our assault as they did back then with an artillery barrage and over on the far side of the arena the gun that you can hear and see firing is an original 18-pounder field gun. Now that is the mainstay of the British artillery during the First World War. To give you an idea of the scale of things, 113 million rounds are manufactured for that one type of gun. And this is 
invention of the tank. 1919, the end of that First World War, tanks are brought back to where we are today. They're brought back from France to Bovington to be chopped up because famously we are never going to need a tank or anything like that again, are we? Because we're never going to fight a war like that again. Some countries, America for example, completely got rid of their tank fleet. They disbanded their tank corps. What tanks remain with the Americans are given to the infantry. A similar thing happens with the French. Tanks are handed over. They're just going to be infantry support weapons in the future. Um, is, has the tank really got a future? Now we've got that tremendous benefit of hindsight. We look back, we know what was going to happen with the tank. And we're going to see a bit later on one of the best collections of World War II armour coming out together. That's where the tank really kind of has its moment in the Second World War. But in that First World War, that post-First World War period, as people are working out, do we need tanks again, etc.? One of the countries that really studied how Britain used the tank in World War I, because they'd lost, it was of course the Germans. The new commander-in-chief of the 100 strong German military that was allowed after the First World War, um, Versailles Peace Treaty keeps into a limited force, they are not allowed tanks at all. Von Sieg, the new German commander, he puts in action a series of studies, 57 studies are made on the First World War and why Germany lost. And the whole aim of that was they didn't want to lose again. What lessons can we learn? Now the Germans are banned from actually making tanks themselves, so they ended up, at the end of the 1920s, doing dummy tanks. And if you look very carefully, coming on there, we've actually made, or our good friend who's driving this, Roly, has made a mock-up for us, just like those Germans did, on vehicles like the BMW Dixie civilian car that was made, they put canvas and wood structure over the top so that as those vehicles are driving around, you can actually see so that the infantry could see what it would be like seeing a tank coming towards them. To a certain degree, they even had German tank crews starting to train using vehicles like this you want. <laughs> it's like um, driving your boats on the... Yeah. During the lunch break on the first day we had a little wander around the encampment area and then over to the tank park where all the tanks that were being used in the displays were parked when they weren't in action. You could get a good look inside some of them and climb up on a few, it was really good. Whoa!
No, you haven't spent fuel. Good on top of it. Hey, it comes until the one. After the lunch break we headed over to the talks where we learned about the origins of the blitzkrieg the basics of tank design and the one that i enjoyed the most was from kate ad who is the bbc or was this bbc war correspondent between 1989 and 2003 and our next speaker needs no introduction miss kate ad Um, I stand before you very much as the absolute amateur in this collection of people. Um, it won Egbert. The town was given the town. And it sat on display in the town for years in a very prominent place. Thank you very much, Kate. It's over to the, to the founder who created it. Uh, Dan, take it away. And then after that, our day one was done. We were staying at a local campsite in the van, so we headed back there for the evening. We are back for day two. When day two at Tank Fest was kind of flipped from day one, the morning was going to be all about the talks, and in the afternoon we will be over in the display show area. That was fired from the tube of the weapon system was already in existence. Consequence: When the Germans started to capture bazookas from the Americans, they realised yeah. that there's something in this. We had a little bit of time between some of the talks this morning, so. Yeah. mostly to be honest to get out of the sun because it was absolutely a scorcher of a weekend we decided to head inside to the actual tank museum everything that was outside was just for tank fest but you could go in to the tank museum itself and have a little wander around we have been before but it was fun just having a little wander around and like i say we got out of the sun for a little bit Good afternoon. We're back here at Tank Fest 2023. Are you all doing okay so far? All okay? Just give me a thumbs up or a cheer. Or no, I want some love. shades. Um, I don't want to sound like an NHS advert, but do make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Uh, you can get your water from just outside the main entrance to the museum. Last time I was on the arena, we were talking about the Western Desert, and the weather seems to be just not appropriate for that. But now we're going to take you forward a few years. It's now 1945. The early months of 1945. The war is very yeah. different. Okay. Germany's on the back foot. German forces are in transit. 1938 when Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia. Following up, SDK is in 2.1 the Hanuman. It's quite a low stock weapon in comparison. Again, remember what we saw this morning. Remember that 88 flag 88. Flag. The hex doesn't come under fire from an infantry packed anti tank weapon like the bazooka or the British Fiat. It's fine. I, I do believe he's got a hit in on the champion. Infantry, so this is becoming a bit of a dog fight. The champion's been immobilised, but we have American infantry coming into the field, and we also have a long barreled. 
76 mil on that Sherman, and that Sherman will deal easily with whatever the Germans have got. Right, he's hit it, he's hit it. Look, we've got smoke coming out from the top there, that's it. That bazooka is more than capable of dealing with that light the arm on the car. But we've got some extra firepower coming in. This is the M18 Hellcat. Mounting oddly enough, pretty much the same 76 would have been the gun that's on the uh, M4 Sherman that we see up there. final day the Sunday we couldn't stay very long on the Sunday because we had to get back home it was a five hour drive back home and we were both going on separate holidays very early the next morning I had to be at the airport for like six o'clock the next morning and Stephen was going away with his friends so we couldn't stay too long but we did go and have a little wander around the tank park again we caught up on an odd talk that we had missed on the other days and just sort of wandered around the place nipped into the shop by some little souvenirs it was a fantastic, a fantastic time. Even for me, someone who's not massively, massively interested in tanks, I've kind of come away being quite interested in tanks. 
after this experience but i would definitely recommend taking a look at next year next year the dates are already sorted you can buy tickets so go and take a look on the website i'll link it down below and yeah it was a wonderful wonderful weekend thank you so much for watching this and i will see you in the next one